Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Freestar Facts. This is a QA episode. I got a lot of questions to actually get through, so let's actually get started here. So let's start with the YouTube uh, questions. So Luke Slagter. You got a bunch of questions for me, and so these are fight questions, so I'll answer them really quickly because I got a bunch of questions to actually go to. So Luke Slagter, Slagter. Who will win? Who will win in these fights? Albertosaurus or Utahraptor? Utahranus or Stegosaurus? Torvosaurus versus Baryonyx or Carnotaurus? and Sukumimus. And you got another one I'll actually read up here in a little bit. It is Kalinkin versus Yotaraptor. And so let's actually start, start with the one you posted up first for me. So Albertosaurus versus Yotaraptor. So these dinosaurs did not live alongside each other. So that's actually uh, one thing to point out. And also, uh, they, and so they're from the same continent, but even though they actually lived in separate time period, in se separate times in the Cretaceous period. And so, if this is a one-on-one -on -one battle, uh, I'm going to have to go with Albertosaurus, because first of all, Albertosaurus is larger, and also it's, got, it's a little bit more tougher than Utahraptor, and Utahraptor, one-on-one -on -one against a, a large Tyrannosaur is not really going to win, because uh, even though it might get some wounds in, it's just that Albertosaurus, but it, it was just one clamp of those jaws, and Utahraptor is done. So, I would have to go with uh, Utahraptor on this one. And then Utahraptor versus Stegosaurus, and of course these two dinosaurs did not live at the same time, and also they're in two different uh, geologic time periods, and also they're from separate continents. And so, in the case, in the in the case sake, Utahraptor versus Stegosaurus, I'm going to go with Utahraptor on this one, even though that Stegosaurus has got those tail spikes. Uh, at the end of the tail, uh, I'd still say Utahraptor is actually going to have a much better time of actually trying to tackle down Stegosaurus. Even though Stegosaurus is, is nearly is actually the sa nearly the same size as uh, as uh, Utahraptor, probably a little bit taller and heavier, but uh, I would still say Utahraptor has actually got the upper hand on this, and that is brain power because Tyrannosaurus are actually uh, the one of the smartest uh, large uh, predatory dinosaurs that you're actually going to see in the fossil record. And so I would go with uh, Utahraptor in this one. And then Torvosaurus versus Baryonyx. Again, separate time periods and also separate continents. I mean, even though Torvosaurus actually did, did live in U Europe a little bit uh, during the time of the Jurassic period. But in this case, I'll go Torvosaurus because first of all, Torvosaurus is larger and also Baryonyx, e even though it could, even though Baryonyx is a very well-known Spinosaur, um, it still would not have the weaponry necessary to actually defeat Torvosaurus because Torvosaurus has bigger teeth, much uh, stouter bite, and um, and I would say that even though that uh, Baryonyx could actually get his uh, huge thumb claw right into um, Torvosaurus pretty well, it's just that I think I think uh, Torvosaurus is actually going to win this one. And then Carnotaurus versus Sukumimus, easy one. Carnotaurus. Because first of all, uh, Sukumimus, even though it's a tad bit larger uh, than it's a tad bit larger than Baryonyx, and also it is a Spinosaur, in, uh, and has those uh, really nasty claws that it actually has on its hands. And even though that Carnotaurus does not have any weaponry in its hands, because it's got really stubby hands, very short, stubby arms, I would still say that the only re the only way that this actually is going to go down to is speed. And that would actually be is that Carnotaurus would actually have the speed necessary to get in some blow, to actually put in some nasty bites uh, on uh, Sukumimus. And then your other question, Kalinkin versus Utah Raptor. This is a really good one. This is for me. This is almost a toss-up because first of all, Utah Raptor, largest raptor uh, of all time in the fossil record, and then you actually have Kalinkin, a flightless bird, probably the biggest uh, terror bird to ever live. Uh, I would actually say I, I I don't know. This one's actually very close. Uh, I would still give the upper hand to Kalinkin because it actually has the brain power. Has the better brain power a bit because it actually can solve the problems a little bit more than Utahraptor. But even though Utahraptor can get in some pretty pretty nasty blows, but I think it's all going to come down to agility and speed. And then Kalinkin has actually got that, and so and also Kalinkin's got a much more powerful skull than uh, than Utahraptor does. So thanks for submitting your question. Uh, if there, Luke, and and uh, hopefully I answered your uh, fight questions pretty well here. And another YouTuber, it's Aaron. 
has actually said, has actually asked me, I have a question. I've been researching Spinosaurids and I found a theory that some paleontologists think Baryonyx and Suchomimus are the same genus, but just different species. What do you think of this? Well, <clears throat> I've looked this up and so looking at the phylogenetic tree of Spinosaurids, uh, you actually do see is that, um, is that Suchomimus and Baryonyx are actually uh, kind of like in the same branch. Uh, in terms of Spinosaurus, so the Baryonids, and so I would actually say that that yes, they are actually they're actually called sister species because first of all, they actually have so many co they have they have so many things in common that they actually are considered them sister species because like they have a similar body uh, body type, uh, no tall spines, uh, just uh, very slender bodies, and also. Uh, has the very large uh, claws, but Baryonyx, I believe, actually has the larger thumb claw, has the larger thumb claw than Suchomimus does. That does not mean Suchomimus. That does not mean Baryonyx is bigger than than uh, Suchomimus. That actually means is that Baryonyx probably actually has the better arsenal necessary to catch fish. And so both of them are actually pescivores, fish eaters. So I would say that yeah, I'd say I agree with this uh, that they are sister species. And so. That's where you actually get the idea is that they're part of the same genus, but the separate species. And so, yes. And there's some paleontologists out there that think that Suchomimus could actually be a larger version of Baryonyx, but I disagree with that because I think Suchomimus has got a much more long, is much longer and slender uh, snout and skull uh, than than Baryonyx. So hopefully that actually, and I do agree with you that. That uh, that they are considered sister species. And then let's actually go to a Facebook question here. So, Alex from Toronto is good. Is that why haven't we found sauropods that were living with the Displetosaurus, Gorgosaurus, Albertosaurus? Do you think it was possible for Albertosaurus, Gorgosaurus, and Displetosaurus, or other Tyrannosaurus, around 90 to 66 million years ago, to in North America to see sauropods if sauropods migrated from South America or Asia? Well, <clears throat> let's actually get down to it. Let's see it here. So, why haven't we found sauropods? Uh, in the same rock form, in the same rock formations as like Displetosaurus, Gorgosaurus, and Albertosaurus. Well, first and foremost, sauropods kind of died, almost died out uh, during the time when those three Tyrannosaurs were actually living, and so uh, the Titanosaurs never really reached North America, probably until maybe around 70 million years ago, and so. And they probably migrated from Asia, not South America, because South America was not connected to North America at that time uh, from 90 to 70 million years ago. And so that's why Alamosaurus is the only titanosaur found in North America. And so that actually kind of gives the idea of possibly that that uh, that uh, that a herd of titanosaurs probably migrated from Asia to actually get into North America. And so, why haven't we found any? It's probably because there's no record of them. There's probably no, there's no tracks, there's no eggs, there's not even any type of fossils uh, shown to actually suggest that sauropods were actually living alongside these tyrannosaurs. And also, that uh, that I think with the time periods, it would actually be very hard for sauropods to actually live in that particular time because you see, tyrannosaurs were just dominating. Uh, around that time, and so it'd be very hard for uh, sauropods to compete with like the ceratopsians and the hadrosaurs that were actually around there. So it would actually be very, very hard uh, for sauropods to actually adapt to those kinds of uh, those kinds of herbivores because they're competing for the same food sources. So hopefully that answers your question right there. Mike from Beaverton, Oregon. So yeah, I read a while back that. Shonisaurus may now be considered the largest ichthyosaur ever, possibly being 85 feet long, surpassing Shastasaurus. Do you know if this has been confirmed yet, or is it just an estimate? Uh, so I would have, because I looked this up, and so whoever is making this hypothesis is probably, does probably maybe has some scientific evidence more 
more scientific evidence to support this than I do, but it would actually be more like say that he's probably he or she is trying to get their get their name out a little bit more to actually say that like that maybe Shonisaurus could actually be bigger than uh, Shastasaurus. But from my understanding is that uh, Shonisaurus has actually been only been found with incomplete specimens. So some bones are probably bigger than the others, some of them are smaller than the others. And um, in the latest estimates that I've seen, can only reach about 40 feet. And so that actually would actually be a case is that maybe this could be like somebody actually doing like like combining these bones to actually kind of think it's a whole skeleton. But really what was going on here was probably um, is that they're probably trying to do something that nobody has ever thought before and they actually tried to uh, think that this could be one animal but really it could actually just be anything but I think Shastasaurus is still the record holder for the biggest ichthyosaur of all time and since that that animal could actually be um, maybe 60 to 80 feet long which is actually unbelievable uh, for an ichthyosaur to reach. So hopefully that answers your question there, Mike. And then Benjamin from Hong Kong, I'm actually going to answer one question from you because since you, that I got a little bit of time here. And so, <clears throat> so uh, let's actually do the question that is actually pretty well here. Could Supersaurus reach, or, <clears throat> no, excuse me, did Oviraptor eat its own eggs? Well, for a while, Oviraptor was actually considered to be the egg thief uh, of the Flaming Cliffs in Mongolia. And thanks to uh, Roy Chapman Andrews uh, discovering uh, Oviraptor, that it would probably say, oh, it must have been an egg thief because there was a uh, Oviraptor uh, clutched uh, with eggs and thought like, oh, it must have been eating the eggs. Um, but could they actually eat their own eggs? That's a possibility, considering that they're probably omnivores. They can actually eat eggs of, like, say, Protoceratops, Velociraptor, even their own eggs. Uh, probably they would eat their own eggs. This basically is because probably they could not actually, probably some eggs were not able to hatch uh, because either they were too cold or too warm or otherwise the embryos died. Uh, but that, that remains to be seen. But could they eat their own eggs? It's a possibility. I would think so. Uh, but I'd say they're actually not going to eat as much eggs as they could. Uh, but I'd say they're the only eggs that they're actually going to go after are pretty much like the Protoceratops, Velociraptor, and a couple of others. But they're probably going to be wary of Velociraptor and probably wary of uh, Tarbosaurus. But I would actually say that they're actually going to be mostly possibly going after like say the like competing Oviraptorids uh, of the time and also uh, Protoceratops. But uh, for their sake, Oviraptor eggs. Uh, Oviraptors could possibly eat their own eggs. It's it's a possibility. I don't I don't have too much say into it, but probably there's some paleontologists that would agree with me that there's a possibility that they could eat their own eggs. All right, that's it for now. Uh, next week will actually be a special episode, so I'll let you guys know what kind of prehistoric animal I'm going to talk about. So stay tuned for that. And uh, you can still send me questions about dinosaurs or any other prehistoric life by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com. Just go to my Facebook page, Prehistoric Facts of Dino Chris. Like the page, you can actually post your questions on the wall or in the comment section. And also on you YouTubers, uh, feel free to like, subscribe uh, all the videos and subscribe to my channel. And also leave your questions in the comment section. I read them all and I take them for granted and I would actually... Uh, let you guys uh, get notice in, in uh, my video, so feel free to do that. And uh, remember to keep your questions short and to the point. You can also follow me on Twitter at DSGRALL. That's my Twitter page. I post some pretty cool stuff on there. Also, take care of people around you. And also, for younger people out there, it makes you listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. It's the best motivation you can have for good education. It's very important to have a good education with a good education. You get a good job in the future. And speaking of uh, Benjamin's question, for the, for the order of after eat the eggs, here is an over after egg. And as you can see, I'm um, in the museum here doing the episode and uh, here's an Oviraptor egg. And this is a replica of course this is not the real thing I would not hold a f actual fossilized uh, Oviraptor egg uh, like this because otherwise I would have been in deep trouble for this but uh, this is a replica and I can hold it with one hand and it's very lightweight and right behind me is uh, Sarah our Protoceratops so you can see I'm right by the Asian dinosaur uh, exhibit and uh, feel free to come on down to Colossal Fossils at any time sometime this fall We're open on the first and third Saturdays of each month now from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And also uh, come and uh, see me and I uh, give you a tour All right, that's it for now and I'll see you guys next week